Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vintage Books Live. I'm super excited to have Jason Tannemore here with us. He is the author of Love, Dance, and Egg Rolls, which is a YA novel that came out a couple of weeks ago. And I forgot to ask you in the beginning, Jason, do you happen to have a copy of it with you? Uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I I'm do, but home, not so, in the same room. I'm at home, so I don't have it with me. It's in the store waiting for you to go and buy it. So <laughs> but we always start out with uh, a little bit, just be, in case someone hasn't had a chance to read the book yet, if you could just talk a little bit about what the book's about without giving any spoilers away. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so basically the book is about uh, Jamie Santiago, who is a Filipino American teenager. Uh, he goes to a private school, so he is uh, essentially the only minority there. So he kind of gets picked on uh, for his uh, race. So it's not something he, you know, is very open about. But at the same time, uh, he loves dancing Filipino folk dances. And no one really knows about a secret life other than his family and his best friends. Well, he ends up... Uh, finally meeting his crush and uh, gets everything moving and to really not really give too much away, he has to decide about going with his uh, Filipino folk dancing, which he loves, or going to homecoming. And he has to somehow navigate that relationship. Yeah. yeah. So before I ask specific questions of the book, I'm really curious. I think I know part of the story just from reading some of your stuff, but not everybody in the audience will. How did this book come to be? Because you work in not necessarily YA writing usually, right. like screenplays and <laughs> no, other things. Yeah, and this so is this is actually my first YA. Um, I, my I, since my last book, I've been trying to write more Filipino cultural type books and this is kind of goes into the answer but uh, I actually danced Filipino dances as a kid and it was very similar where I loved doing it and I loved spending time with all my dancer friends who were Filipino but no one knew about it in my outside life because I had a similar uh, experience where I was one of the few minorities in an all private school and uh, back this was when I went back to when I was in school back in the 80s it was more acceptable to kind of be you know, not I don't want to say racist, but it was very stereotypical, yes. which yeah. I guess is kind of a small form of racism. But yeah. uh, it wasn't until recently when um, I decided that I wanted to focus more on these types of stories because growing up, I didn't have a lot of these books that with people of color that, you know, as main characters because yeah. of the way society and everything conditioned me. So I didn't honestly at the time, I didn't even think I could be the main character in my own life. So that's why I didn't do it. Well, you know, I, I didn't want this. I wanted to break, you have to break the cycle somewhere. So yeah. it wasn't until recently I decided to start writing it because, um, you know, there's a lot of kids like me out there that probably go through the same thing. And yeah. now it's worse yeah. just with online bullying and with all yeah. these things has yeah. gotten inherently worse. So that's yeah. the reason why. That's really cool. And I was going to, as a segue or as a like jump side note, tell me a little bit about uh, Filipino folk dancing and what it like <laughs> culturally like you know where does it have its roots in and that kind of thing well um, that's, because, a, that's a good question you know, I don't I'll, know <laughs> I, I love I love that I think what I love about books giving us a window into different cultures is that we are so exposed you know, I don't really know if you remember River Dance. I'm dating yeah, yeah. myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, like we see, we are exposed to a lot of Western folk dancing, but we're not, you know, and I think we've seen, a lot of people have seen like Japanese dance, which is more of the, you know, there's this particular, I don't think of, I mean, it is folk dancing, but we don't necessarily think of it that way. Right. And and so I'm curious, like, what what are some of the elements of Filipino folk dancing that, that I don't know if that's, it's so visual. I don't know if you can, like, describe it with words, yeah. but. I mean, I, I can only speak to the ones that I was forced to dance. And I say forced, <laughs> I think that as a Filipino American kid, you're forced to do these things. Um, and really the whole purpose uh, why we did it was because every year there was this annual folk festival that mm -hmm. showcased dances and food and uh, attire and general things just to get people 
understanding of you know what the culture is about and so the ones that i did were one called planting rice which was simulating actual planting rice in the fields and then uh, a coconut dance which uh was one i spent most time in it was a uh, basically coconut shells on rubber bands that were attached to your elbows and knees and shoulders and hips and you just kind of did this rhythmic almost like river dance you know it was very rhythmic and, yeah, and yeah. if you did it all at the same time which as kids you don't <laughs> it's kind of close <laughs> um it sounds very similar but you know tenickling is the national dance of the philippines and that was the one that you kind of you really uh, uh to the uh, the older kids kind of did so it was kind of a progression from younger to yeah. older to that yeah. point um, you know, I, I didn't do it to the extent that Jamie did, but uh, the folk festival actually in my hometown closed for whatever reason, um, and we just stopped doing it. And it, it's yeah. weird because even now, I because June and July are Filipino uh, food month or something, and I'm, I'm, I'm sponsoring a couple of events in June, but I saw on Facebook there was like uh, some actual Filipino dance club doing tenickling like this weekend. I was going to try to check it out, but um, so it's, it is nice that it is still being cared for, but I, just someone who was born and raised in States, I was essentially an American kid being yeah, told yeah. Like, you need to do these dances. So I, the, in terms of historical uh, significance in my life, it was just, I really think my parents wanted to get together with their friends and play Mahjong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while, while we dance. Uh, you know, that's kind of what, yeah. I, it's kind of funny because we, I think it's interesting to me that like I see this in like cultural traditions in like my family where it's almost like the uh, those kinds of tradition takes on extra special importance once you're removed from yeah. the you know like once you come to the U.S. like you hold on to those even tighter because you don't have the wider culture around you you have these pieces and um, my husband's family is Scandinavian and so they have very like specific things that you have to do every year uh -oh. like at christmas yeah. or whatever and and of course you know people in scandinavia that itself might not make such a big deal of one little piece of right. it like they do but it's it's something that they hold on to because it's a piece of who they are and so i yeah. just think that's very cool um i have to ask about the egg rolls too because <laughs> you know i i again i think i'm gonna i'm gonna lead into a bigger question um that i have about you know filipino culture and stuff but are are filipino egg rolls similar to other uh, egg rolls that we think of or are there some differences in ingredients and stuff um no not really um you know i think i think when people you know i think lumpia and egg rolls are synonymous to the extent that like burritos and enchiladas are synonymous yeah, like yeah. the insides could be the same but the wrapping is really a lot different you know, egg rolls are a lot thicker. If you ever go to like to Safeway or something where they have the Chinese food that you can get, you see sometimes these spring rolls, they're a lot thinner. And yeah. I, I would consider that more lumpia and egg rolls than more thicker. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I get, if I'm lazy, I'll just go to the Chinese food, you know, place to get some things. But yeah. me growing up, it's, it's, it's very similar. You know, a lot of the, I mean, to be honest, like Thai food, Chinese food, a lot of it is similar. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I wouldn't really say it's anything different than you could get, but um, the egg rolls that we always made were pork. You know, it was always very specific with pork mm -hmm. and the cabbage and the carrots and, and the, the recipe, there's actually a recipe card in the book at the end. Um, so if anyone wants to attempt to make yeah. their own, I think, I think making their own, you can put whatever you want in there. I think it's really the wrapping. Yeah, the yeah, rolling yeah. Food, so. <laughs> the well, and that it leads to a really interesting question that I was thinking about as I was sitting down, like thinking about, well, no, what could we talk about related to this book? and and um i think americans tend to be a little faddish about like adopting or getting excited about or interested in other cultures and like korean seems to be you know very in right now the k-pop and a lot of, you know yeah. bulgogi and you know kimchi and different things and i was thinking about it in relation to you know some of the cultural aspects of this book and wondering if filipino culture and food and whatnot became the next like you know i have fat is a disrespectful word i don't mean it that way but um like something that suddenly people are really fascinated about i'd be very curious to know like what parts of the culture do you think are just really cool or really things that that 
you wished would be part of that sort of awareness or understanding that people start having if something that that tends to go along with people suddenly going oh there's this really there's this very interesting culture and i want to know more about it yeah i I mean i think you know filipino i think filipino and food are the common link if you know any filipino person the first thing they're going to ask you is if you've eaten yet and it you know it's egg rolls it's uh um it's pancit, which are like the kind of the noodles, uh, adobo, chicken adobo. It's yeah. kind of the main that's staple the dish. Know. Like yeah. every Filipino food family will have that. They might have other things, but I think that's the common thing. But, you know, Philippi- it's weird because Filipinos, for the longest time, you know, when I fill out job applications back in the day, there would be two boxes, Asian and then Pacific Islander. Now you're seeing kind of both. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I never really, I always checked one or I checked both. And ch- sometimes I would check the other and not. So I think, uh, especially like Filipinos, they get lumped in with Asian, uh, you know, ethnicity. Right. But right. Like you said like Korean is kind of big right now, and Squid Game was huge, you know. And then yeah, Japan, yeah. and then Chinese. You know, you don't really think of Filipino uh, anything, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, uh, we have a restaurant in Portland, mm-hmm. Magna Casina, who the chef is, you know, really, really being uh, spotlighted for his achievements. So I think that helps, but. I think it takes someone like me, someone like him and all these other people to keep continually talking yeah, about it because, yeah. because there's nothing really special. I mean, to me, you know, it's, I, I don't want to say like Filip- Filipinos are like the Mexicans of the Asians, you know, like it's just, you know, there, there's so many Filipinos. There's, you know, there's full Filipinos. I'm part Chinese and Filipino. There's Hawaiian Filipinos, you know, so I think yeah, a lot yeah. of us don't look the same as well either. So it's, it's, it's weird yeah. to even know all that. Well, I think so- it's, you know, the U.S. has such an interesting relationship with the philippines not always in a good way but uh, right. and and the it's interesting to me that what, what you can you what you brought up is that it is kind of a you know we kind of lump it in with asian culture but it's kind of the bridge between asian culture and and, and pacific islander culture like there's there's yeah. some pieces of both in in that right. culture and well uh, that's really I, I mean you know the philippines used to be owned by spain right it was a yeah. property of spain and then the spanish-american war happened that's why a lot of philip most filipino surnames are mexican or yeah. hispanic yeah. based you know because of that i mean my last name tan amor is you know it's tan amor in spanish it means yeah. much love so yeah. it's 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 nothing you know when you think of filipino you don't just it's just not something you think about uh like oh that's filipino I mean, yeah, there's exactly. a very distinct, like, I, I can, you know, a nose, the Filipino nose, and then pointing with your lips is very, uh, something that I think is uh, very identifiable, but it's not like you would just go, oh, that guy's per- pointing with his lips, yeah. he must be Filipino. Yeah, yeah you gotta know that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what, I like, I'm curious, since this was kind of a first venture into sort of bringing your culture and your experiences into a book are you is there more in store of of you know bringing that into other projects um or was it kind of a you know doing this and then kind of moving on I'm curious where you think you might be going with it well the the book that came out before this was actually about Filipino folklore um uh and then I just finished the draft of one similar as a it's another why it's a about a Filipino kid who's struggling with his identity. Um, and it there's actually a Filipino food cart uh, owner that I used to visit when I, you know, before COVID downtown. Yeah. And he just, you know, just a very entertaining guy. And so I kind of used them loosely based as the character, a character in this book who used to be a Filipino superhero back in the day. And then uh, something bad happened, so he just decided to not do it anymore. Well, this this Filipino teenager is trying to really identify with his culture, meets this Filipino superhero, and uh, witnesses something spectacular, and then decides to kind of befriend him. And I think they kind of help each other bring each other back into their thing. But yeah, I, I for the most part, I, I would like to, whether it's even Filipino culture or heritage or whatever, just with Filipino characters, I think is very yeah, important. Yeah. Whatever genre that is. Yeah. No, I think I think that's the other thing that I'm seeing. And I'm finally, I'm relieved to finally be seeing it is I think it's amazing and wonderful when we get books specifically about a culture. But I think it's also good that we're finally seeing that 
you know, you can, they can just be people in a book. It doesn't have yeah, to right. be about a specific right. thing. And I, you know, I know there were a lot of um, the authors from different cultures who were a little frustrated in the last, you know, probably about 10 or 10 to eight or 10 years ago where they were saying, you know, I can't sell my book unless I make it about, you know, yeah. specifically about being this person instead of just a story that happens to have characters yeah. in it. You know? and <laughs> I, th I think we're okay, finally right. getting there and I yeah. wish it didn't take so long, but I'm, I'm glad to see that we're finally just, it, it, yes, yeah, well, there's some of that, but it's not always. I, I, I also think, pub, you know, publishing is also a business too, right? I mean, yeah, you're, you know, yeah. you're in the business of books. So yeah, exactly. one of the first questions when you're pitching these books are, well, what other books are like it? You know, like, well, why do I, you know, yes. I, I like it think my book is unique, but no, now I got to yes. compare it to ones that are yeah. out yeah. there. So I think that was part of the problem when you had a bunch of similar books and it just became multiplying by similar yeah. and similar, you know, someone's got to finally do it. And, and that's the thing. It's like, if I don't write these things, then that's one fewer person doing it, you know, if yeah, I'm not, you, exactly. no one else is going to do it yeah. if I don't do it. So regardless if it's a Filipino superhero or cultural or something, or just a Filipino main character who, you know, is some, just a Filipino person. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. Keep doing that. Yeah. So. yeah. so you said you're working on a new YA project. Do you have other projects going? I saw, I think I saw your, in your chat line or your like, uh, I can't remember one of your social medias was something about writing a script. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. so, I was so like, the, oh, the, hey, the, that's interesting. The, yeah. Um, the book that came out prior was uh, called Vampires of Portlandia. It was, uh, it's about Filipino folklore. And um, that was just recently optioned. So we are uh, developing a series Ooh. right now. So yeah, oh, so that's I'm exciting. Of writing a pilot. Yeah, I'm very excited yeah. because it's more of a visual. Um, to me, I write very visually then, you know, I, I, I kind of imagine the concept of the yeah. story yeah all the way to almost the end before I start writing it because it's just very mundane I don't know if you ever try to sit down and write a book it's just like oh yeah <laughs> someone yeah right and someone you know I'm very animated I'm very storyteller like yeah. you, know, yeah. you want to be around people um but at some point you got to sit down and do this very very monotonous task it's so much nicer in your head than it ever yeah. is oh, no, right. Right. Exactly. Paper. exactly you can see it and you can see it and you know when when I try to imagine the story, I try to see it first and then fill in the dots. So a lot of times when I finally get it down on something tangible, it's more of an outline, you know, like a scene yeah. and uh, the details I might just, you know, just put nothing in there or X's out and then highlight it. So I know I need to come back to it, but that's, you know, I, it's a process that's always worked for me because my day job is I, I work from home sitting behind a computer and yeah. it simulates yeah. too much like a day job. And to me, yeah. that's work. And it's yeah. never, like, you know, work yeah. is always negative. You know, like, do you yeah. want to go out? No, I got to work. You know, I can't, yeah. I got to work. Yeah. So it's like, you look at it as a negative connotation. So if I can avoid that process for the longest, yeah. longest point, then I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And are you, I can't remember, I mean, because there's a lot of, um, in in Love, Dance, and Egg Rolls, there's a lot of references to, I can't remember if it's screenplay. I mean, there's, yeah, you know, like the scripts and stuff like that. And and yeah. I assume that that's from some of your work just that you're doing. Well, it was, so I used to do stand up a long time ago. Um, when I, uh, I have a degree in accounting because I'm Filipino and you know, I had to do something <laughs> practical. You know, my, that's what my parents will tell you. They came over from, you know, the Philippines to do that. So, and I never knew that you could do anything artsy you know it was always just a hobby and yeah. so when I graduated I practiced as a public accounting uh public accountant for a year a little over a year and it was just so not me and so I was still single you know and at the time so I remember calling my mom telling her that I was going to quit my accounting firm and she was like oh yeah where you know what, where are you going and I said I'm going to do stand-up and it was just like I ripped her heart out <laughs> um so you know so I grew up watching these sitcoms and, you know, stand up. I, follow, I, I would read a lot of stand up comedian biographies. I still do. And I love just, I don't know. It's just very interesting. Yeah, to me because, yeah. uh, it's just something that I've really found joy, but I hated doing, I love doing stand up, but I hated doing just telling the same jokes over and over again, you know, yeah, unless, yeah. unless you could be someone big like that, but that's years and years and years making. So uh, my whole life was like that. It was just like, 
it was a coping mechanism for me to get out of situations or something that's uncomfortable or awkward. I would just think of a sitcom or a comedian bit. Yeah. And that's kind of how the Jamie is. It's like, yeah, I love that to, about it. Yeah. Trying to be uh, kind of cope with what's going on. He just yeah. imagines a, a bit, turns it into a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I yeah. think that it's very, that's, that was one thing that I thought was really authentic about it because I mean, like what teenager isn't trying to go, Oh shoot. Like, <laughs> how do I, <laughs> how do I navigate this? Let's put yeah. it in order here and figure it out. Right. Right. Because yeah. you know, the, when, if you watch enough shows, especially sitcoms back in the day with commercials, everything gets resolved in 22 minutes. Yes, you know, there's exactly. always a resolution, no matter yeah. what, no matter that's how why bad they're comforting. It, <laughs> that's why they're comforting. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, that's why everything is, uh, um, uh, you know, is able. He's able to to get through whatever that situation is because he knows at the end it's all going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. So I see I was just about I was getting close to winding up anyway. So I'm just going to jump right into this. Um, Luis posted that some of your stories take place in Portland. And what draws you to this setting? Portland. So Portland is when, okay, so I, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Illinois. And when we moved out here, we've never, my wife and I, we'd never been to Portland area. All we knew it was from Portlandia or, <laughs> you know, the crime or whatever it was. Yeah. So I think whenever you ask people not from here, you get those two responses. It's either Portland is just this goofy, silly place or it's like Afghanistan because they see these riots. Yeah. And to me, it's like this weird in-between because there's, I mean, you're in the area, there's pockets yeah, yeah. that are like, you know, like this is very Portlandy, you know, yes. you know what that means. Yeah. This is very yeah, Portland. Exactly. And some of it's very downtown, you know, Chicago-ish where I'm near, but uh, a couple years ago, I was driving downtown to get somewhere and the riot police were on the block ready to do something, but they're all lined up and it was right by the food cart block and people were just buying their falafel wraps while the riot police were like not even a block away. And it was just yeah, so, yeah. you know, it was just so yeah, important. Yeah. So it's yeah. very, very uh, conducive to a lot of things. And I thought like the perfect setting for this, you know, someone who's cultural, someone who's artsy, in the mm -hmm. middle of all of these protest type things. Yeah. And yeah. this is the perfect way for them to blend yeah. without explaining like, well, why are all these protests happening to this yeah. minority? Yeah. You know, like this is yeah. Portland. <laughs> like you come to Portland. Well, and I think there's a it I think there's a really fun and fascinating mix of cultural influences in Portland yeah. too, because of course we're on the Pacific Rim. And so there's all kinds of Asian Pacific Islander influence, but then yeah there's other people who have come you know west from other places and so it, it's an interesting I, I mean i'm in vancouver but we're really a suburb of portland yeah. <laughs> don't let anybody in vancouver hear you say that All right <laughs> but we really yeah. are and um and so yeah it, i think of myself as being associated with portland just because it's it's it is the city and we're all kind of around it um, yeah. And there's another good, actually, this is a really good question. Um, many kids are embarrassed by their parents and Claudio is certainly a quirky character. Was there a specific inspiration for him? Yeah, that's actually loosely based off my father. Um, you know, my dad had this big karaoke microphone with a built-in uh, memory that had it had like a built-in keypad or number pad that you could program songs and all you had to do was plug it into the TV and it would come up on the screen and he, he bought it for like a few hundred dollars but this thing was like glued to his hip like you know it was almost like a tool belt to him and uh, so a lot of it was based off him that he was just this quirky guy uh, but when it, the matters became serious that he was an actual father and that was that's my dad and and uh you know a lot of filipino households are karaoke you know i mean i, I think karaoke is probably prevalent in a lot of cultures but you know filipinos you'll find food karaoke and mahjong pretty much consistently that's throughout awesome. the house um, yeah but yeah but he uh uh just kind of reminded my dad my dad lived there back home in illinois so i don't get a chance to see or talk to him a lot but it was kind of a way to me to kind of keep that relationship there still but um yeah. but yeah that's that's my dad everyone who meets him they're like oh, i love talking to your dad he's always so funny and just so you know fun but like you know growing up as a filipino kid who 
was kind of embarrassed of his culture anyway also trying to say hey my dad does karaoke you know <laughs> like yeah. you know while you're there like yeah that's, that's just embarrassing enough I don't care what culture you are you know no yeah. one's coming to my house yeah. <laughs> Why would <you> have to? <laughs> yeah. that's awesome Luis did you have any other questions you can you're welcome to pop into at this point if you want to but um that's totally up to you because we are recording so you have books coming up um and this the pilot hopefully oh, that's so exciting um yeah. and i and Luis did pop up another question so let's do that uh let's see jamie goes through an identity struggle as portland protests echo in the background what would be your advice to a teenager going through a similar situation well i think you know i think that you need to find people that are similar to you um and you know part of my problem was is i went through that awkward phase where i, I didn't want you know i was very ashamed of it so the last thing i wanted to do was hang out with other filipino women in public you know, I love doing it dancing wise. I love all that. So I think it's important to find those people because, you know, you're never going to find anyone who goes through those same things as you unless they actually do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's strength in numbers. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's pretty yeah. simple to think about, but it's difficult to do. Yeah. And he says, that's all my questions. Yeah, no, I mean, I think the other thing that resonates with me is that my um, daughter is adopted from China. And so oh. she, um, you know, she grew up in white culture, you know, there's no way yeah. that that's not going to happen. And she's in college now and has been able to find, you know, other Asian Americans, other Asian yeah. adoptees. And so having that piece of herself that we couldn't really give her has been really well really and special she, for her you know, so like me you know i was born and raised here so i'm i'm an american person i just happen yeah. to look yeah. different yeah and exactly I, you know, I, I speak uh, you know i don't have an accent i speak yeah I very, yeah her too know. yeah yeah exactly. so yeah. it was very i get it i get it it sucks yeah but, you're kind of you know, like <laughs> Well, and people yeah. make comments and they don't even think about it. and you're sitting over there and she's sitting over there in the corner going, yeah. oh, that wasn't cool. What are you doing? Right, right. Well, so, and, and yeah. even like during the last administration, you know, like I was born and raised here and just, you know, I was, there's times where I was like, oh God, okay, what's yeah. this guy's going to say something? Yeah, like, no, oh, we were actually, she and I were just talking in the phone about, on the car about that today. And yeah. I don't think she's had to deal with that too much because, you know, she was always, Fortunately, she was, you know, still in the house, kind of yeah. in a bubble a little bit. But you know, the more in college, she in college out is, in the in world, college is good. In yeah, college yeah, is like, college is a good. Kind of, she's had a good bubble. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. she doesn't. Pardon? I said, hopefully, she doesn't have to go. With yeah, them. I hope so too. But I don't know that there's much hope of that not right. hitting her at some level. I wish it was, but. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Luis, for yeah, popping no in and being with us. And I think that's all we had tonight. All right. Well, thank you. So thanks for having me. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye.